Welcome back to another video. Hope you are having a great day. And today with a Thunderbolt 4 docking station. And if you haven't used a docking station before, or if you haven't heard about docking station before, basically what will allow us to do is to connect to our laptop with Windows 11 or Mac OS or Linux or any other operating system that you have, one single cable, and then all the peripherals that we want to connect, we will connect directly to the docking station. We will be able to connect up to two displays, keyboards, mouse, we will be able to connect SSDs, hard drives, SD cards, micro SD cards, and a lot more accessories and peripherals that we want. Now, the biggest advantage, at least in my point of view, is that instead of connecting everything to the laptop and then disconnecting when we want to take the laptop away, in this particular case, I will only need to disconnect one single cable, can take my laptop away. The next day when I arrive, I just need to connect one single cable and I will have access to my displays, to my keyboard, to my mouse, to everything that I had connected previously. Now, this is a Thunderbolt 4 docking station, so that means that it has 40 gigabits of bandwidth and we are going to check out if it will handle all the speeds that we will put it to test. So. Let's go for it. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated it and can't even edit your desktop icons, don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price. And with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description, it will get even cheaper. And besides Windows 11 Pro, if you are looking for Windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our Microsoft account you can use the same coupon code which will give you the best price possible at this moment so just in case the link will be down below and before we start testing it out just a quick note in terms of what comes inside the package which basically comes with everything that we need to plug and play and in terms of ports really quickly here at the front we will have a Thunderbolt 4 connection two USB type A 10 gigabit one SD card and one micro SD card slots both of them 4.0 which means that will go up to 350 megabytes per second one audio out one power button and then at the back one Kessington lock one power in where we will connect our power adapter one USB type A 2.0 one Ethernet port 2.5 gigabits HDMI 2.1 one Thunderbolt and then one USB Type-C Thunderbolt connection to our laptop. Now, these are the connections that we have available, a lot of them. Now, let's go and test it out and see what we are capable of achieving in terms of speed tests. And now with a setup example for the Thunderbolt 4 docking station, and I've got two laptops right over here, Windows 11, Mac OS, but we can only connect one laptop at each time. Now I want to show you some tests on the Windows side and some tests on the Mac OS. So if you use Windows or if you use Mac OS, you will know the results and you will be able to decide if this is the docking station for you or not. We are going to perform some speed tests here and some speed tests right over here. Now at this moment connected via the Thunderbolt cable, we are powering this laptop up to 140 watts. But if I want to connect another device, for example, this laptop, if I want to charge it only, and if I connect via the USB Type-C cable right over here, I will be able to charge up to 85 watts maximum, either on a laptop or a tablet or anything else. Now, this laptop only consumes about 60 watts, so it will not max out the docking station. I also have a Google Pixel 9 Pro right over here, here, charging via one of the USB type A ports. Now looking at the Windows side, I haven't got any other cables. We are connected via Ethernet. I did disconnect the Wi-Fi connection so that we can test out the speeds that we can get out of this docking station. So we have a 2.5 gig Ethernet port and we are reaching almost the maximum on the download speeds. We will get about 2050 megabits per second download, but on the upload side, which I've been testing already, we will get almost the maximum of the bandwidth, which is 2.5 gigs, and we are reaching that 
2.46, 2.47 and about that. So it has the 2.5 gig bandwidth. Now at this moment I'm using two displays plus the display on the laptop. If we want we can close the laptop and work only with two displays. If we only use one display we will have a resolution of 8K maximum at 30 hertz. Using two displays we will have a maximum of 4K 60 hertz on each but if we want we can lower to 2K and in that case we will have 240 hertz available which is great for gaming. Having that in mind so we can use all this and for example if I want to use a SD card I can just put it on the slot which is a SD 4.0 and we will test the speed as well but just to show you that at this moment we have the main hard drive of the laptop and we already connected the SD card right over here and it's showing as well the Pixel 9 Pro which is connected via USB and we are great. Now one of the things that we can do on a normal setup is when I finish my work right over here I can just unplug one cable and everything that we had connected, our displays, keyboard, mouse, everything will be disconnected from my laptop so I can close it and take it to work. Having in mind that the phone is still charging because it's connected right over here so it's not sharing any documents with the laptop but it's still charging and we can connect also other devices for charging up to 85 watts and now let's connect the thunderbolt 4 here to the macbook so that we can see not only windows but also mac os in case you are using mac os this is the macbook pro with m1 pro chip and at this moment I'm not really sure if I have the screens configured or not. Let's check out. It seems we have. Yes. Okay. Because I've been playing around with it this afternoon. Now one of the things that we can check out is that we also have the connection 2.5 gigs. So if I go here to one of my browsers I can just start a speed test and we will get more or less the same speeds. We will have 2.5 gig available on macOS or Windows. So in terms of bandwidth a lot to uh, choose from. Let's just let it finish right over here so that we can jump into the speed test. 2000 maximum here and reaching the 2450-ish more or less. So a great result. So let's put on this window right over here and at this moment I've got a SD card connected and it's a Sabrent SD card. Let's connect it right over here. Select target SD card open. Let's do a speed test. We are talking about SD 4.0 which will go to a maximum of 350 megabytes per second reads and writes maximum but this will depend on our card. This card is a bit lower so we could see that it had a peak of about 400, 500 but in sustainable speed about 200 maximum. So we can see it did jump until uh, 700 megabytes but then it will lower to the 200 megabytes per second which is the maximum of the SD card. So we can finish this test and let's take a look at a more interesting test. So let's remove the SD cards. I also have a Thunderbolt SSD right over here so I'm going to connect it via the Thunderbolt connection here. So we have a bandwidth of 40 gigabits. Let's just wait for it to appear right over here. Here we go, Sabrent 1 terabyte. So let's select this drive and select the Sabrent 1 terabyte, open and let's start the speed test. And this is different from the SD cards, but it's still not finished. So we are reaching 2400 megabytes per second reads and writes, but the drive is capable of reaching 3000. This is the maximum, this is the limit of this particular SSD, 3000, 3500 megabytes per second reads and writes. So we are reaching here the 3300, 3400, which means that it's 3.4 gigabits or 35 gigabits of bandwidth of the 40 gigabits available on this connection right over here which is just awesome. So if we want to use for video editing or any other demanding task this is the SSD to get. I did share this already on my channel several times so if you need any links leave a comment down below and I will be happy to share with you. Now let's stop this test which is really cool but let's just stop and if we want to use any other 
another SSD and this one right over here is a budget SSD, at least a budget enclosure, then we can choose the SSD that we want. So let's disconnect this one right over here, which is a Thunderbolt SSD, a lot faster. And let's connect this one on one of the USB type A ports. So this port right over here has a maximum bandwidth of 10 gigabits and we are going to test that out, connecting this SSD right over here, which I will try to leave a link down below as well in case you are interested. Now, mini one terabyte, we have connection right over here. So let's select this disk and mini one terabyte, open it up and let's go for the test. As we can see, 1500 megabytes per second, which is more than the 10 gigabit, but this is a big speed. In terms of sustained speed, expect for 1000 megabytes per second reads and on writes, which is just awesome. So some great speeds right over here as well. And actually we are getting more than the 10 gigabit speed. We are about 15 gigabit right over here on this connection. So let's stop this test. And so we have tested the Thunderbolt connection. We have tested also the USB type A 10 gigabit SD card 4.0. We also have the micro SD 4.0 and at this moment just to share that I'm connected via the two displays as I said and I'm connected via USB type C to HDMI adapter that comes included but it, this is optional if I want to use just one display then we can and basically this is it in terms of speed test in terms of powering the laptop using Windows 11 or Mac OS or if you use Linux you will be able to take advantage of all this as well and basically this is it so a docking station with Thunderbolt 4 which means that as we have seen it has a lot of bandwidth we were capable of achieving 2.5 gig Ethernet crazy speeds on the SSD especially that one with the Sabrent external SSD which was roughly going to the 35 gigabit speed which is a lot and all the tests that we have seen now one thing to have in mind is that we have seen some docking stations actually a lot of docking stations some of them more simple some of them more complex having in mind that this is a Thunderbolt 4 docking station means that we have a lot of bandwidth as we saw but it's also more expensive than some of the docking stations for example with USB type C which usually are 3.2 and that means that we only have 10 gigabit speeds on that particular docking station. There are some setups which the 3.2 USB type C is enough but there are some setups that we want to take advantage of the Thunderbolt 4 40 gigabits as we have seen on this particular one. Now in terms of all the speed tests that we have done I have no issues whatsoever in recommending this docking station. And that being said I will leave the link down below so that you can check all the rest of the specifications that it has, prices and whatnot. Hopefully the video was helpful to understand a little bit better how we can use a Thunderbolt 4 docking station and if that was the case don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you on the next one.